Welcome to another episode of This Silly with the Lulians. Mitch, Matthew Bird. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> We're going to talk about Sarah Robertson. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and of course, we'll talk about Bradley Damon Brun. You usually talk about me when I'm not in the room. We talk about you in, to your face, behind your face. It doesn't matter. <laughs> We don't even mind if we offend you yeah. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> We're way past that point. Yeah. In fact, it's actually kind of something that we we'll look forward to. We'll do it on to. the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got that coming. <laughs> well, you know, guys, I mean, again, I didn't think we had anything to talk about. And then when I start going through our Twitter feed of what's happened since the last show. Hell, even what's happened today. There's, there's quite a few things to talk about. So it's almost like we should do this show more regularly. <laughs> um. But I, I do find that when we don't have a lot to talk about, when we don't have a set agenda, it just we just start talking yeah. about mm-hmm. whatever, and they, they make some pretty good shows. Yeah, and I think some of these topics will will lend itself to uh, some expansion on on the ideas. Um, so I'll just you know go through. Stuart some. just texted me said, "Have a good show. I miss you guys." Oh, <laughs> I miss Stuart too. I mean, I guess that's one thing we can talk about. I where are we shot wise? I've had my first shot. I am immortal. Mitch, I, Mitch I, got one and done. I'm a one shot wanker. You're a one shot, Sherry. You got your second one yet? No, okay. not yet. So, but close. We're we're yep. getting there, and we're hoping our listening audience is also either on a list or or on their way oh, to this getting is on a list. All right, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but the the good news is, once everybody has their shots, mm-hmm. and I think midsummer maybe we can talk about doing a live show somewhere or getting. At least a small group together yep. uh, who've been vaccinated and, you know, have a little fun, have a little get together because it has been forever since, I mean, we've gotten together some as the podcast, but I mean, even through last season, you know, after that first or second game, yeah, we didn't see anybody in a large group. So yeah. there's a lot of people, not just Stuart, that we're missing. And you know, like, I haven't seen Claude and Michelle in a year. Yeah. You know, that's an example. I just, you know, there's so many people I just haven't seen. I actually, I went for lunch with Mike McHugh today. <laughs> and I I can't remember the last time I went out for lunch with someone. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I was, I can't remember. Yeah. I, well, that's what I was telling them before you got here is, is that I am completely in that Groundhog Day cycle. I get so excited when you guys are here because I'm seeing people. You know, mm-hmm. I, since I, since my job is work from home and travel and they've cut off the travel part. I don't do anything. I go to the grocery store. The cabin and that's fe- literally cabin it. fever is a real thing. Oh, and, yeah. and it's hitting hard. It's I mean, no surprise them Finnish people top themselves every winter. Yeah, I mean, our neighbors are kind of in the similar. The, the uh, Joel is a teacher, and, and Sarah is uh, works from home. Do, and they just said, okay, this weekend was the kids' spring break. They just fucked off to a cabin for three days, mm-hmm. just because it's like we have to get out of the house. We have to get away. For real? Well, and I think, you know, I posted something about it, and Sarah's been doing a really good job on Instagram posting, like, memory pictures, and and now's that time of the year when it's our AGM parties. Yeah. And, you know, this time is when we would be getting together with everybody, planning on what... Hell, last year, I think the season was starting right about now. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) March, so there's a real hole, and... We're starting to feel it now. And again, we're seeing USL and MLS teams scheduling their preseason games. And Well, the USL put out schedule the first games today. Okay. Home I mean, openers, yeah. It yeah. just absolutely sucks that, that we're not a part of these conversations. It, it's awful. I mean, and, and that was the one thing that, you know, the dreariness of winter is soon, you know, oh, it's March. Here is soccer. Here right. is my summer. Here is my excitement. And you add in that cabin fever, plus knowing there isn't that relief coming, it blows. Yeah. But we do have a day to look forward to. Tuesday, May 18th, that will be the home opener of the new St. Louis Scott Gallagher USL Division II <laughs> team. Uh, they're playing Des Moines Menace, our old uh, rivals from the Lions days. Mm. And that'll be at Soccer Park. So is Sideshow Bob going to be there? Oh, no, no, he I was Springfield. He's, he's, he's Springfield out. demise. <laughs> he's probably uh, like fifty-five yeah. now. <laughs> um, he come and, and went. <laughs> and yes, it, it is. It is a midweek game that kind of sucks. But hopefully by that time, you know, we can do some outdoor events, spread out in the stands a little. Uh, attendance 
I'm sure won't be near as high as it was for <laughs> mm-hmm. St. Louis FC, but um, it'll be it's, it's, it'll be 200 people tops. But it's live soccer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it'll be an excuse for some of our friends to get together, who you know just haven't been around for a while. And I'm looking forward to it. And so. it'll be a chance for new people to come out and meet people. What and day is that on? A Tuesday, May 18th. <sighs> um, Why didn't they call me and check my schedule? Yeah. Well, <laughs> what do you have going on that day? Work? <laughs> Go after work like it'll you be, did any other time? It'll be an evening game. So. Yeah, but I have to get up the yeah. next morning. Um, it does suck. But if you're working from home, you don't have to get up that early. Well, I probably won't be then. <laughs> yeah. A lot of these games are midweek games. I mean, they're squeezing into soccer park when they can. Uh, for those of you who weren't around when we were with the Lions, uh, it's a short season. It's really short. Basically, these are college kids. They have to wait until the NCAA releases them at the end of the spring college season, and then they have to go back to college early. So it's a couple-month season. We're looking at eight home games, I think. I think that's what it is. Um, so it's it's not going to completely fill the void left by St. Louis FC. And, of course, in addition to uh, this team, we know that the Fire and Ice women's team and the St. Louis Lions women's team are going to be playing. We can hopefully catch a couple of those games, and especially the Darbies, but I think those are usually on Wednesday nights, too. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not the choice Saturday evening soccer that we like. Right. But there are some. But it's something to do. Yeah. It's methadone. It's methadone. Yeah. It's methadone is what it really comes. And down they are to. the games are fun. I mean, but it, it it's a step down in quality from USL Championship. Most definitely, these are college kids or college women. Yep. With the Fire and Ice and the Lions. I mean, it's no different than if we were supporting St. Louis University or something similar in, in yeah. status of of play. And, and there are some options there too. I mean, there's SLU, there's SIU. Webster. I mean, there are other local soccer teams around for college games if you want to go see those. Um, Hopefully, Marissa is still playing. I've, I've, not, still seen, a, I've not seen anything regards to schedule or anything or league or yeah, what. Yeah, still a little I, up in the air. Um, I asked. He said they're still planning on it. So, And I know Club Atletico is still planning on doing some exhibition games of some kind. Um, you've got St. Louis FC Academy is going to be part of the MLS next thing. And they and a talked team. about it. They, they just went out, played FC Cincinnati and they did really well. They won a lot of games against that. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I, that, I did see that. So, I mean, we may be able to squeeze in a couple of those over the summer. We're mm-hmm. still crossing our fingers, hoping for maybe a road trip. Um, Chattanooga is just down the road a little ways. Our buddy Jeremy's there. Uh, Richard Dixon just re-signed with them. So that's a good reason to go see Chattanooga. Plus I think, in general, they do things right. Chattanooga. Chattanooga. <laughs> uh, you didn't say it right. They're a community-owned team. That's kind of cool. Yes, yeah, very. Um, I know some of our Luligan members own shares in Chattanooga Football Club. That's kind of cool. Uh, and then there's there's Louisville. I mean, we want to mm-hmm. go back to the new stadium. There's Indy. Sporting Kansas City. There's Indy. There's Tulsa. Tulsa. Chicago. There's there's no, no uh, limit of options, just depending on what we can do travel wise this summer, probably going to be too early to rent a bus <laughs> and yeah. go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but maybe next summer we could do that. Yeah. So just follow us on social media and, and you're, you're also forgetting there could be us national team games pretty close by, even if not in St. Louis, but yeah. you've got to imagine Louisville and Cincinnati are going to be on the rotation for games. Yeah. Kansas City, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, for, for sure. And, and Chicago and, and Doesn't, Nashville. I isn't, mean, isn't Cruz's new stadium opening this year? Or is that next year? No idea. Okay. No idea. But, but, but still, Columbus yeah. is always an option, and they're mm-hmm. getting a new stadium. Um, speaking of new stadiums, uh, at the last podcast, we talked about Charlotte's ticket pricing, <laughs> which had just come out and I think was a resounding disaster. Uh, how expensive it's going to be. Since then, both Austin and Cincy have released their ticket prices for their brand mm-hmm. new stadiums. Much more reasonable. Much more in line with what we were thinking. Hopefully, will be the prices for St. Louis City. They they came this. I didn't see Austin's, but I did see Cincy's, and it was after right after our last podcast. And yeah. you physically sat there in that seat and said, twenty five dollars for a seat per game. Yeah. So that's that. You said that's about, and and there it was on since he's, it was, and there was cheaper tickets. There yeah. was twenty bucks and twenty five dollars. 
t- that's what we said. That's yeah. what we said. We're not. We're not. You know, we're not sat here demanding eight dollar tickets. Right. You know, we are realists, but we also and even don't that's wa- going to be expensive for some people to get season tickets. I get that, but yeah. we also don't want to feel like we're getting our drawers ripped off. Right. Well, and we want people to be able to try a game who maybe aren't fans. You know, just want to come see the the shiny and new, mm-hmm. as you like to say, and not cost an arm and a leg, and have fun and think. Well, that was reasonably priced. Right. We could afford to come back to a few games or eventually get maybe you buy, tickets. Maybe they have a three-game or a six-game I mean, pack or something that they I'm can buy in. If I'm buying a $100 ticket, I better have the time of my life. Mm-hmm. But if I buy a $25 ticket, okay, then you know the, the bar is lower on how much you have to entertain me. Well, and the other part is, too, is that that $20, $25 ticket gives you a few extra bucks to get a beer or yeah. soda or a hot dog. Or... It's a hundred dollars for a family of four versus four hundred dollars for a family of four. Yeah, that's a huge difference when you start multiplying multiple tickets. So I I thought it was a good news that Austin and Cincy's prices are, you know, quote unquote reasonable. Uh, I think the supporter section was in the four hundred to five hundred dollars section for a whole season. I mean, that's feasible. That's doable. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what was what was St. Louis? the last year 250 or something in there almost 300 almost 300 so you know that's not too big a jump that's a fair comparison so kind of excited about that and excited about uh the new stadiums i'm looking forward to seeing austin stadium when it's done and since he did the nice little light show video not my well not my kind of thing but it was impressive i i still we have to find somebody who can hack into it yep. <laughs> yeah that's sarah's plan <laughs> since he is shit just over and over and over just looping around yep. the stadium yep. no i mean and that's what i mean supporters i guess should it's, do. it's fine were you gonna stand outside and look at it though no but the thing is is that it's not necessarily for that it's for non-game days when you can have something grab people's attention it, i like um and the first stadium I saw that was kind of like that. Again, it's it's that spaceship look. Yeah. Uh, was the Allianz, Allianz yeah. in Germany? In Germany, mm-hmm. yeah. And Bayern Munich, and people don't realize this. 18, 1860, 18, share it, right? Yeah. And it lights up red when Bayern plays, and it lights up light blue when 1860 plays. I mean, it's neat, and I've driven by it because I was in Germany, and it is cool to see it all lit up at night. Now, I think I like our design a little better that kind of fits in with the neighborhood. Yeah. But Matt Seebeck, po- you know, posted, it's kind of neat that all these different stadiums are going up and they're not carbon copies. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Like mm-hmm. In the seventies, Bush stadium, yeah. three rivers, <laughs> every uh, stadium looked exactly alike. Veteran stadium. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then even like when the Orioles came out with their new retro Camden Yards. stadium, yeah. then every stadium became, start, retro. became the retro I mean, stadium. Even yeah. our, even our, it's funny. We went from, Bush 2, the cookie cutter, which yeah. was the cookie cutter, to now a cookie cutter retro. Right. Which, I don't get me wrong. It's I, nice. It's, I do like the retro style yeah. a whole lot more. I think they're, and I, but I do like that, that, you know, for example, ours is going to fit into the environment that it's being put into. Plus, that, I think soccer's great because unlike Major League Baseball or the NFL, where everybody has a regulation size field. There's a little variety like, oh, their stadiums, you know, this and the dimensions of the pitch are this. And, you know, you get different teams play different ways depending on what their home pitch size is. Like the Yankees play on a postage stamp (laughs) or the Yankees. I say they play in Yankee Stadium, New York City FC. They play, you know, they've got a tiny pitch and then Kansas City's got a big wide pitch. You know, I like that. I do as well. I I am a bit of a sta- stadium geek sometimes. Yeah. I, you know, I, I know not everybody is all for the pictures of it going up, but I like the architecture aspect. No, I'm I'm not all about the pictures going. I don't need to see weekly updates from 300 people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that I. Yeah. I mean, it's a little overkill. So, you know, I. I I know what a construction site looks like. Speaking of which... I'm glad people are excited about it. The no, one, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool, but I, it's a little overkill for me. The, yeah. one, the one to follow, though, is Stephen Hale from Schlafly. Yeah. He was yeah. the guy that started it, he, and it was yes. once every two weeks. And, and he, he, and he does up it on from the, the same vantage yeah. point, yep. so you can actually see what's changed since the last Exactly, video. and and not only that, but you also get a perspective because 
a lot of us have been to that Schlafly yeah. location. You can look a lot out of us and, will be going to that Schlafly and walking to that new stadium yeah. across exactly, the street. Exactly. So you get that perspective of of how it fits into the neighborhood and and, and what's going on. Neat because it's the supporter section is right there in front of him. Yeah. And they've put up the beams for the supporter section. You can see how close it is to Schlafly. That's it's pretty neat. Could they throw me a beer? I posted that. I said, you know, you get one of those big slingshots. <laughs> Trebuchet. Like, yeah, and just I'll stand in the top row with my hand up, and we'll see if Steven can hit me with the with the beer. I'm thinking it's like, you know, when you go to the Cardinals games and, and uh, Fred Bird has that T-shirt launcher. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You just yeah. slide me a can Thump. of summer lager. A potato Thump. gun. Yeah. <laughs> well, that and the fact that. They could maybe put up a big bleacher on the top of Schlafly. Oh, it's like the Cubs. Like the Cubs. Yeah. You can, and, and maybe the, you can see over the roof down into the pitch. And then they'll build a wall in front yes, of it just exactly. because that's money. Well, that it depends on if Schlafly's a big sponsor or yeah. not. <laughs> if it's the Schlafly Stadium, maybe they'll build a wonder, walk covered walkway. I wonder if we could like run a zip line between the two. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> the the okay. St. Luligan zip line to the game. <laughs> oh, no, a gondola. Oh, or we no. could just ride the gondola to the section. It's a, if it's like a ski lift, I'll fall out <laughs> onto the highway midway through. A fall. Yes, yes you yes, will. Yes, Quote, unquote, fall. <laughs> Sarah just gives me a good sharp kick. It's amazing. It looks like the markings of a, a pink yeah. samba on the back of his back. Man down. <laughs> Don't hold the game. He'll be fine. So anyway, that was good news. Uh, let's move from the dumpster fire that is uh, Charlotte MLS to the dumpster fire that is Charlotte USL. Uh, more... I don't know anything about what's going on. Well, it starts... Uh, good, because everybody gets to hear your rage in a few moments. Okay, great. This will be good pie. <laughs> okay, wh- what's his name? D'Amico? Or... Don D'Amico. Oh, Don D'Amico. yeah. Okay. Racist, next? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, he's had some inopportune quotes about Asians with the virus. And, uh, okay. Uh just a lit immigrants and a, a litany of things that you probably don't want your owner and what, saying. What's his last name again? Demarco. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The Italian word yeah. Demico. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he was never his people were Native never American. Immigrants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely isn't, you know, standing feather yeah. or anything like that. Um in addition to all of that, which is there's a good uh Twitter article about it i've i've tweeted it out when it was happening but uh basically the fans saying you know something needs to be done here we need mm-hmm. to make a statement uh basically denouncing the owner maybe even force him to sell the team like they did oh. in salt lake can you imagine what a nightmare that must be uh, even the independent supporters group put out a statement this week yes. last week saying hey supporters around the country are not okay yeah. with us then you tie in the fact that this year to kickstart attendance, they've started their own supporters group, the so, team. So there's an yeah. independent supporters group called Jack's Militia. Been around for since the club's six inception. years, seven years. And, you know... The, Good people. Yeah. I mean, there's not a lot of them. They weren't as... as We've met a couple that came here for a game. They, they, they're, they turned they're hardcore, up yeah. And, and Charlotte Independence... Needed them. They were... Very St. Louis FC ish. Yeah. They weren't the best teams in the league. They had a couple of flurries of made the playoffs decentness, a times, yeah. you know, with with some really good players like the Martinez's and the Josh Herrera's and whatnot. But um, but the Jacks were there. They were there. I mean, they were there. The attendance was great. They supported. Great. They had a club. they had a bad location. They but had these people, bad locations. Well, yes, but <laughs> these people were the hardcore, always there, small but loud and proud. Yeah, nothing to say bad about. Jack's militia. So now mm. they've the club has has got this owner who's a bit of a nut job, um, very outspoken, very out there with his views. Uh, very, I don't want to word, use the word bigoted, but you know, no, he's, yeah. he's he is calling out Asian people yeah. and, and why not you you bigot? And so because the, the the Jack's militia is getting on his case, the club now have all of a sudden come out with a new supporters group. Jack's Brigade. It is with a, so shameless. With a with a horse's It's the same. They're, it's, they're just trying to glom on to, to what's already out there. And and confuse. Like, why not just, if you're going to do it, which mm-hmm. teams that start their own supporters group, they're garbage. But give it a unique name. 
don't blatantly. I mean, it's blatant and it's obvious that they're trying to glom on, glom on, or it'd be like somebody divert a, attention away from the real Jack's militia. It'd be like St. Louis City starting their own called St. L- the the Lewis Hooligans. Yeah, something you know, or something like that. It was so and use blatant. a skull as their logo. Right. It was so blatant that we like green too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it, it was embarrassing. It's, it's basically spitting in the face of the one group of people who've supported you from the beginning, even through racist owner and, you know, uh, odd business decisions like hiring a, what was it? A, a, a Gaelic football coach. A Gaelic football head coach. I mean, I think they were hoping for a Ted Lasso <laughs> kind of thing. Before Ted Lasso. But it, it didn't Ted work. Lasso. Yeah. Um, so wow, what a piece of shit! So yeah. <laughs> poor, and then and then the trifecta. Oh, Charlotte no. also has a NISA team, which is owned by the which league. is owned by the league because they can't find anybody to front it. So they've got three teams with three dodgy ownership. Jesus. You know, you know what they need. They need they need a they need a new indoor soccer league. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what they need. That's exactly what they need. Now, I say all that, but I also want to say, God love all the Charlotte soccer fans. It's yeah. not their fault. No, no. I can't and, imagine that. And seeing how many, uh, uh, if you don't follow the soccer goose on Twitter, yeah, you ben should. Gershon, it, yeah. Really a good follow. He is a great follow because of his knowledge and his experience, but also he is telling great stories throughout this process. And, and he speaks as an insider. We can, I can only say what I'm observing from the outside. Right, right. He's inside the bubble. And, and he keeps retweeting other fans saying, hey, you know, I put a deposit down for the new MLS team. I've withdrawn that deposit. I want my money back. You know, because I'm, the prices. I'm not going to do this PSL thing. Speaking of which, let's before we move on completely, David Tepper, who owns the Carolina Panthers and now Charlotte FC... This is a guy that during the Black Lives Matter riots, they took his statue out from the front of the Panther Stadium because they were sure people were going to come take it down <laughs> because of his, let's say, poor statements, poorly timed statements. You could just not be racist and then you wouldn't have anything to worry about. Hey, hey. First it's of all, hard. I wonder about anybody who puts their own statue in front of their stadium. Yep. Yep. That's that's to me a red flag. Yep. Like Couldn't, after you've died and they want to memorialize you, let but somebody he's still else alive. Do that. Exactly. Yeah. That's not your decision to make. Exactly. That's somebody else. We'd have a Tom Strong statue, but he <laughs> wouldn't do it. We would do it. Yeah. And it would be by the guy who did the Ronaldo statue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> For sure. Just so, so Tom so, could have to walk by it every day. <laughs> so here's the thing, right? And we've sat here for the last couple of months, and and even me on Twitter sometimes like. What are we doing here? Yeah. Why, why is our MLS group doing this? Why are they doing that? Why are they doing that? I mean, we could be Charlotte. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. We could. I mean. I will say think, this. Our think, group is not racist. Nope. We've got nope. things to. <laughs> or sexist. We, we think mm-hmm. we have things to complain about. Yeah. They're but little. But they're pretty yeah. trivial compared to. And we'll get to Sacramento in a minute. <laughs> but Charlotte. Next on the list. <laughs> Charlotte, man. What? A shit show. And we haven't even mentioned Mint City Collective sycophants. I, yeah, I don't oh, even want You haven't it. mentioned them yet. I don't, oh. I don't want to talk about them. But that's, but that's again, that is exactly another part of this. It's Isn't, the, isn't that the MLS team doing the Jacks it Mafia lo- thing? It looks a little... Gross. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, lo- it looks as though the front office is pulling the strings yeah, for uh, that I would say group. it's more than looks like it. I would yes. say there's every indication. I, it, and, and when every when every tweet or message that they put out is suckling at the teat of the team, yes. and they can do no wrong, and but you, you every hire, I think, there's some, I think there's some coordination there. Yes. You, you lose credibility immediately. You, you, you lost have to, credibility. You have to be able to make that criticism. You have to be able to. Well, that's the point of an I independent su- supporters. Group. Well, I yeah. support Manchester United, but I'll sit here all day and bitch about Ed. Woodward and the Glazers. I, I am. Mean, n- fu- don't yeah, even oh, get yeah, me started. For real. But for it's real. like. But it's like the old, you know, saying where you know, if you love this country, you shouldn't talk shit about it. No, a real patriotic person points out the flaws and works to make them better. Yep. That's what a supporters group does. That you know, I love my team. I love St. Louis FC. Yeah. But I'm not going to sit here and say they made every right decision because obviously we only made the playoffs twice, and. 
there were there seasons were, when we had to say, this isn't good enough. Uh, well, the, I how, love Dale Shilley, but he's got to go as the head coach. How many times did we sit here and say, we don't have a midfielder? We right. don't have a striker. We, we can't we, pass it up the field. Right. We I would, told the general manager sitting next to him on the couch, your team quit on you. Yeah. And he did not like that. No. I, bet, I bet it still gives him a just a little tinge right I, now. I bet yeah. when he heard this, he yeah. just frowned. Yeah. Hi, Jeremy. Yeah. But that didn't mean I didn't love him and I didn't love the team. I'm just, This is what... It's what the passion is about. That's yeah. what it's supposed to be. And, and I can't imagine being... And we can disagree. Right. It, it's not that I'm always right or the supporters groups are always <laughs> right. I've seen a lot of supporters groups <laughs> make big mistakes. Sarah's just laughing no, at the not. very thought. <laughs> <laughs> but but I'm talking about we've seen supporters groups take stands that were like ooh that, yeah. that's yeah. not yeah. necessarily what they want to do but Mm-mm. we all make mistakes mm-hmm. but you have to be able to make those mistakes if you don't do anything to to stand up to the team then you're not really an independent supporters group you're just a marketing arm yeah, yeah you just yeah for real and, and if you're in if you're sitting there and you see this MLS team. That has shit on you and you your USL team that you had supported, but you're like, this guy is too far. I can't get behind his racist bigotry. Oh, I'm going to go to MLS. Now they're without they have two clubs there that they can't support. I just I mean, that's that's new, awful. I hope a new strong supporters group starts up in Charlotte. Um, but I feel bad for the Jacks because they've yeah. done everything they should and yeah. they've been rewarded with getting pissed on. Well, yeah. But they've uh, what, what's USL's game plan here? They're just waiting and hoping that the independence and, fold and when the MLS team comes And that's along? the other thing I don't understand. What are the USL yeah. doing? They just well, don't seem to be doing anything. I will give, I mean, regardless of their owner and, and his ignorance, I will say, God love them, they're trying to make a go of it, at least for right now. They're going to keep playing until the MLS team starts. I wish, cough, cough, someone would have invested in St. Louis FC for another couple of years. Yeah. But but that's the thing though is that why isn't USL making a stance on this? MLS did with Salt Lake City. Because then they'd have to get rid of all the rich owners that have eight views. <laughs> yeah. and, and we'll, we'll get to that no, later. There'd be no one left. <laughs> we'll get to that in a little bit. Yes, we will. <laughs> Jim and Tom can't buy everything. That's yeah, true. Exactly. That's true. I was going to say. I think that was one of the nice things to see Jim constantly out there oh, with God. progressive, you know, social status measures. Just rational. It, yeah. Yeah, and the it's human follow- being. It, the tailors are the same it's way. It's following yeah, exactly. with the tailors. Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. I, I don't have any doubts of their views. No, yeah. no, and that's what it should be. You Ugh. should be one. And, and it doesn't have to be political at this point. No, it's just racism human. is not it's political basic, unless you're a it's, racist. Yeah. It's Correct. humanity. It's basic now, human fucking rights. Now let's follow that up with. There was an awful. Sh- <laughs> there were two shootings this this week. Let mm-hmm. me be specific. It shows that we're getting past Corona. We're, we're back getting to, back to normal. Back, <laughs> yeah, back to murder. <laughs> it's public <laughs> shooting season. Uh. Um, but MLS, a lot of teams in the league, and and not just soccer, baseball, hockey, have made statements supporting Asian Americans because mm-hmm. whether or not we want to say that the shooting was race based or gender based or or whatever this crazy nut jobs ideology was, yeah. In general, hate crimes against Asians are up in America because of the China flu and things like that. So a lot of teams have made, come out and made public statements saying, you know, I mean, ba- this is these these statements are milk toast. They are not, you know, fire and brimstone. They're yeah. basic PR. Statements. They are. Yeah. We support, you know, our Asian American friends and, and just very simple, positive statements. Right. You look through the comments. Ugh, mm-hmm. I try not to. And it's a fucking disaster. Yeah. And St. Louis, you know, we may want to say, you know, well, we're not that way. Oh, we, we are. are. We like, are. You oh, read we through are. St. Louis, the mm-hmm. Cardinals. STL today. I'll say it's better with the soccer team. I think soccer fans are, are maybe a little more evolved. Yeah. But not much. Mm. But no, you no. look through the Cardinals. or, or Yeah, on the St. Louis. Uh, uh, STL, STL today. STL today. Like every other statement is it's horrible. horrible. Defending racism. Yeah. yeah. And, so. it, and I, I don't get, and, and I, I do, I don't want to get into it too much, but since World War II, the Asian people have had a lot of things go on under the radar that nobody stood up for. Nobody did anything about. 
It was just, well, they were the enemy, so we're accepting this behavior. And now is the time that we need to make these stances, and these teams do need to say, hey, this is important. Yep. So to see these assholes get out there and say, well, it, you know, if they didn't do this or... They're American citizens. Right. We put them in internment camps in our own country. Yes, yeah, we did. American citizens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was 70 years ago. Well, 80 years ago. I mean, this is... <laughs> Brad said he was a teenager when it happened. But that's it. You know, it's like everybody is an American. Yeah. Why is this a problem? I don't get it. I do not get it. And I do want to give credit to that Asian woman that got knocked down and a whole bunch of people donated to her GoFundMe for oh, the grandma. Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who basically she took a punch. Yeah. Like a like a beast. And everybody's like, oh, here, there was like $90,000 getting to her within like two days. Mm -hmm. And she said, nope, we're sending this to food banks and to Asian-based charities because yeah. we they, they need it more than I do. Hmm. Yep. That good is baller. There, yeah. are, there are good people out there. Yes. So, so, yeah, we need to be aware that this isn't just, oh, Charlotte. Charlotte's got a problem. No. No, America has a problem. Yep. So, And you can't let it, like, you can't just... We're past the point of like just being the bigger person and letting yeah. it go. You have to say something. You have to say something. <laughs> so, speaking of saying something, mm -hmm. I want to preface this conversation we're about to have oh, uh -oh. <laughs> with, I don't know what's going on. Okay. But we're seeing some players who haven't been picked up yet. I'm thinking right. of Kyle Gregg. Yep. Hasn't gotten a contract. I don't understand it. Uh, Sam Fink. Don't get it. Um, but somebody I, I've been thinking about the last couple of days is our friend Tyler David. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, Tyler plays for, played for Omaha, Omaha mm -hmm. Union. W was their captain, if I remember was correctly. Was, yeah, yeah, captain. Brand new team. And they did pretty good. They made the playoffs. Yeah. And What's that and, like? And I, I think a lot, of, a lot of what they do, like I like their supporters group, mm -hmm. the parliament. Yep. You know, their logos, the owls. Yep. So it kind of fits. Um, their branding's cool. Mm -hmm. They've done some cool things online. But Tyler hasn't been re-signed. Right. Now, again, I have no knowledge of this. Right. But I'm wondering if... Yes. <laughs> Tyler's very outspoken on social media. And yes. We've told you Sarah reshares a lot of his Instagram videos. Every time. Yeah. Every time uh, I do. We've told you all a lot of times to go check it out because mm -hmm. he's had good guests on. Yeah. He's been very outspoken with the Black Lives Matters movement mm -hmm. and specific to soccer, the the black experience. Right. Um, I'm wondering. Now, obviously, you could say, well, Kyle Gregg hasn't been signed either. But I'm wondering if maybe Tyler's outspokenness has hurt him mm -hmm. in the quest to get re-signed or find a new team. Maybe right. we should ask Sean Reynolds about that, too. Yeah. I mean, it happens. I mean, I'm not, and again, I'm not saying Op Omaha is doing this. I'm just right. wondering aloud. Right. And, and and I get, I mean, how old is he? 27, I think. Okay. So, I, I, I mean, maybe they could say, oh, it's age. Or maybe they, they say like, you know, he's a five-year veteran, so. We can't afford to pay. Right. Yeah. But he was he, also playing in, in second, third of it, whatever <laughs> fucking color it is. Yeah. Yeah. Division. <laughs> teal. I teal. don't know. What? You know, but. USL Teal. But so, you know. If he's willing to play in that division already, right? He's not asking for Landon Donovan money. No, you know he 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 is. I'm sure he is expecting the appropriate pay for the appro appropriate level of soccer. Right. Yeah. But when, how do you not? That's what I don't get. Like, how do you not look at him and look at his play and say that's who I very, want that guy? I'm very my team. versatile player. And like he can play giant, several positions. Yeah, giant yeah. freaking dude. Yeah. And not only that, but at he was just captain. Mm -hmm. he, he's a he's USL a, he's a championship caliber player. He, yep. that he was a, playing in Division One. Right. He yep. is a natural leader. Yes. Not only on the field, but we saw it off the field mm -hmm. that he would show up to events and yeah. talk to everybody. Yeah. He, you know, he was one of the guys that would always stay and sign autographs and, yeah. and take pictures. Well, the, with the kids. was it the one game that he was injured or suspended or whatever it is? He came he and played in the stands. Came yep. in the stands with us and played the drums. Yeah. Um, you know, he I, would come to our events like mm -hmm. where players 
sometimes they're obligated to do certain things. Right. He wouldn't be obligated and would still show up at yeah. a charity event mm-hmm. or at a, you know, just a get together. Right. Right. He's that kind of guy that you want. Yeah. And if you listen to his talks, it's not. No, he's not. It's not radical. No. It's, not, it's, it's not angry black man. It's, it's no. It's discussing issues and him listening to his guests and going, okay, I never thought of that. And having a discussion. Yeah. Which. Like I learned so much from all his. Absolutely. And there's so many times that watching him, you know, everybody thinks they're not a racist. Right. But Mm -hmm. he'll bring up something and you're like, oh my God. I I do that. Yeah. uh, You know, I think I've done that in the past Mm -hmm. and I got to make a conscious effort not to do that. Exactly. Because of the way the discussion goes, it's presented in a non-combative educational format it's no different than a ted talk exactly. or or a conference yeah. you know a you know, a college classroom lecture right it, it, it and is, it puts it in a in a in an area that we're comfortable with soccer right right, yes. right. and how these things play play out in a professional life right of a soccer right player. if you talk about the economic devaluation of east st louis versus the city of st <laughs> right. louis i'm i'm probably going to gloss over yeah. because that but you put it in that soccer format, I am focused and yeah. I'm engaged. Mm-hmm. And the only reason I bring it up is because we just discussed an owner who may not be in touch with his players. Right. And and we see this all across sports. We mm-hmm. see, I mean, what's her name? Kelly Leffler, the, the senator that owned oh, yeah. the WNBA team. Mm-hmm. And she was furious that her players were talking about Black Lives Matter. Yeah. That's someone who maybe shouldn't own a team. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I think she did get out. She did. Yeah, she, she did. did now. But so whether it's the guy in Charlotte, you know, so maybe there's a young Asian player might not feel comfortable right. in Charlotte. He might not get looked at in Charlotte if his owner feels that way about Asians. Right. Mm-hmm. It just made me wonder, I, I will, could that be part of the problem with why Tyler hasn't been signed? Well, and I, I will say like re-signing in Nebraska like all this happened when he was there. Nebraska's right? a red state. Yeah. I, I, well, Omaha I, is actually it, fairly liberal. They did, yeah, yeah. They, but. they did the didn't they do the stripey like half was blue, half was red or something during the election? I is don't, that yeah, Nebraska? Yeah. 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 Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, that's okay. the state that does Yeah. Yeah, all but, their votes don't go one way. But yeah. I can't see the them being I guess I don't know. Tolerant. I, I, yeah, I guess so. Like I don't I don't see them being that way, but other cities, why wouldn't you pick him up? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if, if Tyler was here, I might like to ask him, do you think your outspokenness has played a, a part? And, right. see, well, you know what? I'm going to actually stop you there. I don't like the word outspokenness in this situation because I think it has a negative connotation. I think, yeah. I think, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I do, but, but that's exactly yeah. it. And, and it's, it's not a slight against you, but there are probably, Owners, general managers, who he's are, not screaming "fuck the police," right. right? But but in their mind, if if he gets the tag of being "quote unquote" outspoken, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. You that's think true. you think that he's not a locker room guy? Yeah. You think that he's not cooperative? That he's not a team player? And and it's a it's an unfortunate association. But as yeah, soon as he that, could get labeled as exactly. that guy, but exactly. but has that already happened? Yeah, that's my question. And, and I, do they take the time to actually? watch his videos absolutely not or do they just Mm-mm. assume he's that guy yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they see the shirt with the the black fist which yeah. again he raised a lot of money for a good cause he by sure selling mm-hmm. a shirt yep speaking of which i do want to mention uh uh oh, what's the name of it? for the culture if you don't follow for the culture on twitter they're they're an mls kind of group but they do talk about all aspects of soccer mm-hmm. but it's black focused okay and they sell a really great t-shirt which given everything that's come up this week and we can talk about the camara incident uh with rangers they sell a shirt that says you know it's got a big blank spot it says how many days since the last racist incident in soccer it's just got a big zero like zero days (laughs) since the last such a great shirt and the proceeds are going to a good cause so i'll link it i'll share it again tomorrow but for the culture, give them a follow. So, yeah, I just don't. I don't know. I do wonder if, like Omaha, probably wasn't the best fit for him. And and that's the weird thing. That may not be a factor at all. Yeah. But the fact that we're all kind of thinking it, right? It's mm-hmm. an issue. I think. Yeah. I think 
people, players of all sports get blackballed. Yeah. yeah. From Kaepernick down. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you can't. Yep. Seriously. We don't have to go far to see a big example of it. Yeah. You know, and... We and no sport is you know hockey had it where you know indigenous guys were blackballed. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, NBA is probably the most progressive because you had women couldn't run the Boston Marathon until nineteen sixty something. Right, right. I mean, well, you say NBA is better, but when Jeremy Lin first started, there was a lot. There was a lot of Asian backlash. Right. I mean, it still happens. But that this. I mean, it's crazy, but yeah. I'm just getting angrier and angrier at the minute. That it just it makes me really mad because you look at Tyler. Like I don't know that he wouldn't be friends with anybody in the locker room. Like I think he's like oh. the guy that's like nice to everybody, unless you you'd, you'd have to like really screw him over. Yeah, but like I think he would. He brings the entire locker room together. A, a consummate teammate. Yeah, and like I said, versatile player. He could play four or five positions on the pitch. Mm-hmm. Right. Some. And Brad, Brad and I like to tell the story before SDLFC started when he was playing for SLU. We met him in an event down there mm-hmm. and completely engaging. He just right got away. randomly assigned to our table where they, you know, every player sits at a table with right. dignitaries like Mitch and myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he was just such the nicest kid. Yeah. And asking us a million questions. Mm-hmm. And, you know, not like most college kids who kind of you know put their head down and you know, I got to be here or whatever. Right. He was an engaging yeah, young man. Yeah, he's I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. I mean, but and Dale was there and they were talking about youth team. Dale games. remembered him yeah. playing in a tournament three years prior, <laughs> which he knew well, the sure. name of his coach. He in was Minnesota. The, he <laughs> was the big he black did. kid in Minnesota. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there was only a few. But but it was amazing because you just saw this this and. Again, my expectation for college kids at these events is yeah. you if you nod, that's all I expect right. out of you. But like we came away, like he made an impression, so much so that when they announced he signed, Mitch and I were like, That's the kid. Yeah. That's the kid we were sitting with. Yeah. You know? And and he became immediately like, Oh, that's our guy. Right. Yeah. Cause we know he's a good dude. And that was that was neat to see. The thing yeah. is, Ty, Tyler David can play a bit too. He's oh yeah. A yeah. He is, he's he's a very good player. Yep. And, uh, I think the first year when he was here, he was probably, I mean, he was coming right out of college. Mm-hmm. I think he was outclassed a bit. But you saw him grow as but, a player. But he got better all season long. You saw mm-hmm. him grow as a player. And by the time he left, I was really sad that he was leaving because I thought he had found his feet and he he knew how to play in that league. Yeah, absolutely. And he had the bot. I mean, physically, he's a gifted player. Yeah. Like you can't teach being that big, right? But he he was such a student of the game that you saw him learn how to yeah. expand his game to fit the league. I feel like he's a student of everything. Like he, yeah, no, yeah, he he's absolutely so engaging. Is. He'll have but here, here, conversation about flip anything. flip side of the coin. You know, can can we defend cancel culture when it's you know the the Hannitys and the Limbaugh's and whatnot that get him canceled and then say you know that the players who may be outspoken. Well, you know, what, are you are you, the 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 thing that I'm taking away from it? There's never anger in Tyler's. No, house. no, no. I I agree with. I totally agree with you. He's not. A, you can have a conversation with Tyler David. He will not make you mad. He'll make you think. He yep. won't even raise but, his but voice we, during. But these we've already established that the people that are maybe canceling outspoken, they, they've not listened to them. No. Yeah. Like my my father-in-law hates AOC. Yeah, but he could not tell me whatever she said. No, it's right. just what he's learned off <laughs> right. Facebook. Right. You know, it's that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's 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 hard to, it's hard to say, but I will say, you know, and Mitch has said this a lot. It's not cancel culture. It's you know, Consequence accountability culture. <laughs> culture. Yeah, and the fact that what Tyler David is saying is not you know, universally hated. It's not, it's not inappropriate, let's say. Um, and I think if you polled most people, mm-hmm. most fans of the game, I know if you've poured, polled most supporters groups, right? they'd be like, no, fair play. That's what he should say. Yeah. Now, if you poll them about what Charlotte's owner said, most of them would say, mm, that's crossing a line. Yeah. So I think, I mean, obviously you get into trouble when you say, 
majority rules because the majority can have bad opinions. Yeah. But I think in this case, well, it, it, he's not being divisive. You, at but all. You, no. the perception overrides reality. You're right. It just, you're right. You know, one rumor that, oh, he's the dude with the Black Lives yeah, Matter podcast. Yeah. yeah. And that's or, it. He's labeled. And we see, you know, a player like something on Instagram and all of a sudden he's that guy. Yeah. But that's the thing. Right now, Christian Pulisic is not getting tagged that <laughs> I guy. I didn't mention any names. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I will. When he's liking a far right, a, a extremist yeah. far right view on social media, nobody's calling him out. Oh, uh, he's being called. Yeah, out. I've seen. But some. but I'm just saying he's yeah. not going to. He's not losing a contract. Over right. It. Right. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, that was a better way of saying it. Because the owners probably agree with that, or they can look past it because yeah. he's good enough and yeah. he's white. What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that I mean. Yep. He's from the mountains of it, Pennsylvania. It, he's white. <laughs> he's a hunky. <laughs> he's from the mountains of Pennsylvania. All right. Is let's, he? Yeah, he's from Hershey. <laughs> Fucking hunky, man. He's from Hershey. <laughs> no. Did you not know that? Is, is no, from Hershey. Yeah. Are we going to get canceled because Sarah called a guy a hunky? I can say that. They're my people. Okay. <laughs> um, Matt, you mentioned it earlier. Let's just go ahead and throw the topic of Sacramento onto <laughs> the floor. <laughs> um, Sacramento was going to get an MLS spot. What happened? Not so much. <laughs> um, apparently, they missed a payment. Uh, and the, the, well, he walked have, away, like, right? I mean, he just he, walked away. Well, yeah. At first, he missed a payment. Then he walked away. That's when they call you and they're like, "You got a grace period. You got to make the payment in thirty days." And then and that's said, when he walked away. And then they oh. said something to the effect of, "Well, we'd never signed anything." So it was kind of sketchy from the beginning. How so, did she not sign anything? Well, here's the here's the history with Sacramento. Who's their legal department? <laughs> exactly. Not they did you. not have Sarah. No. Um. Sacramento cleared any bar that was set in front of them with regard to support. Mm -hmm. Sacramento uh, Republic has been kicking it, you know, since the beginning. 10,000. I mean, they were the original modern USL super club. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were getting 10,000 when everybody else was getting 3,000. Right. When they first played at Hughes Stadium, they got 20,000. The first get the shiny and new. Exactly. Got 20,000 people. Yep. So. They cleared any bar. The only thing MLS ever said was, well, first of all, they didn't really like Sacramento as a as a market because they had too many teams in California already. Mm-hmm. But they couldn't really overlook what they were doing in the stands and and being successful on top of it. They won their won the championship their first year. Right. Of eight teams. <laughs> well, yeah, but mm-hmm. I mean it's not the USL yeah, of no, today. <laughs> no, it's changed since but then. But they still won. But they've managed to maintain a very high level of support and community involvement and doing a lot of things. Now they beat Wilmington in the final. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How many championships did St. Louis FC win? Zero. Exactly. And even if there was only eight teams, we wouldn't have won one. And you know it. No, but we thought Preki was God's fucking gift, though, didn't we, when he won it? They were so bad, so good. They beat, they won the championship with Preki. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> so he, anyway. And, I, I, anyway. Can't, I can't imagine he walked away from that club thinking the league had got worse over three years. Or 18 months. Oh, man, but just, he was going to go to Leicester. And I just want to tell Leicester fans, you never would have won your premiership <laughs> if Preki wouldn't have gone there. Wow. So anyway. The problem with Sacramento for MLS was always the money. They didn't have enough money. Well, they didn't have the specific ownership group that MLS has come to expect. Which equals money. Well, yeah, because because they were getting, they had already sold the front of the shirt to a sponsor yeah. for MLS. They had already done. They wanted an owner with deep pockets. They they had already done the marketing aspect of the MLS move. They wanted and getting their the community Ponzi scheme payment. In. Yep. So. Sacramento missed out on a couple of rounds where everybody thought they would be next. Yep. They finally landed their big money guy in Burkle. That was finally where MLS said, okay, he's worth enough. We can do this. Is that his first name or his last name? <laughs> Bur- no, it's Burkle Burkle. Just one. He only has one name. <laughs> it's Burkle. He's, he's, he's like Madonna, Burkle. Prince, <laughs> Burkle. Burkle Mc- Burkle. McLovin. McLovin. <laughs> So now one name, man. I'm not going to go into all the weird things about Burkle and his finances. 
which of the, which the, there's a, there's he a bought Neverland Ranch. Let's leave it at that. Yeah, for like twenty five million. <laughs> but he's decided that MLS. <laughs> what do you need it for? Well, <laughs> Epstein's okay. Island has <laughs> fucking been fall close, Sarah. <laughs> First of all, okay. where are you going to keep your monkeys? <laughs> well, so. Okay, okay. All right. okay. Wait a minute. Hold on. Right. Hold on. My attitude has changed <laughs> on the monkey. Now that you're bringing but, monkeys into it, but there are there are some questions about his involvement with Epstein. There oh. are some questions about maybe where some of his money comes from, and he's decided to back out. And so MLS is now saying, mm, "We're not so bright and shiny on Sacramento. You need another owner." We're rescinding that spot. That spot is now open again. So you've got some choices. Sacramento could put together another big money owner and and get that spot back. Oh, speaking of which, Burkle also, he owns the rights to the NWSL team that was going to go in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And today there are rumors he might move that team to San Diego. So not only did they lose an MLS team, They've lost their NWSL I team. I don't. I I understand why he walked away from MLS. I I understand that. I don't understand what benefit there is to moving an NWSL team to San Diego from Sacramento. They're very similar. I don't quite. Better temperature. Well, let's just say he's not welcome in Sacramento anymore. Yes. Yeah. So he could either sell the team or take it wherever he wants it. I just anyway. That's neither here nor there. That's my, just my, another. My question to you. Yep is if owners are now, or potential owners are now walking away, is there there no return on investment? No. I don't think that's it in this case. I think in this case, there are pressures weighing down on Buckle that we may not see yet. I still think there's going to be something with this Epstein thing come out. I mean... With Burkle, particularly. If if your lawyer is telling you to keep your head down and lay low... That's what I'm seeing. Then I, I get that. But. Or you're worth this much. A year from now, you might be worth half as much. And, mm-hmm. and you could buy Neverland and turn it into your compound where you can hide. <laughs> yeah, but also... I mean, and get a monkey. Laying low is not buying Neverland. Well, mansion. that's true, Laying too. low is just buy, buying a mansion by the, the Bay Ocean. But it, if you're the owner of an MLS team and then all this bad shit comes out about you, the value of your MLS team goes down. Neverland's value is going to keep going to be, remain the same. I'm just saying. Mm. So anyway, now you look at the usual suspects: Vegas, Phoenix, San Diego, and then today we hear, "Oh, Louisville, we hate you." But Louisville. Oh. <laughs> but this is what what I'm get, getting at with the MLS are reaching here. They're reaching now. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. I think, and, and I'm not not to disparage Louisville. But when Sacramento, St. Louis, Phoenix, Tampa Bay were all in the mix two, three years ago, they never mentioned Louisville. No. They but never would have considered Louisville was playing in a baseball stadium at the time. They, I, so I, is Las Vegas. But it goes back but to... But Vegas is Vegas. Every, every sports league is tempted by Vegas. What does MLS value in a new ownership more than anything? Money. Money. And if Louisville's got the money... Louisville's the team. If no, Alaska's got the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm not good, bad, or indifferent. That's the way the game works now. Now, the question for me with Louisville is, they've got this beautiful new stadium, seats eleven thousand. It's expandable to fifteen. That's not big enough for MLS. Would they build another new stadium? Would they take out a wall and try to build a giant wall to make it 20,000? that's what I think they'd do. I think, having been there, and again, I'm just... Brand new. I'm just, you know... Like this, the, the peel-away stuff is still yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> we were there only once, and it was one of the worst days of my life. Yeah. But as, as what I can remember... The area that we were standing in was pretty much open behind us. They could build a wall up behind oh, yeah. them. So they could go two, three tiers over there. I'm just saying, the way it was originally designed, it's expandable to 15. Now, 15 is plenty. I'm sorry, it is. In MLS, 15,000 is plenty. But it's not, according to what but they I want. But I think the league is going to demand at least 20. Yep, I agree. So 
I think they would have to reconfigure. Not, not if someone shows up with a check for twenty million. <laughs> yeah, They'll just yeah, say, yeah, yeah, we can live with I mean, eleven to fifteen. NYCFC for now. is still playing in Yankee Stadium. Yeah, for, for real. If, if money talks, then money talks. But I still think of of all the candidates. Louisville's low on the list. I think our league champion, Phoenix, the league, MLS league champions get ten thousand fans. Columbus get ten thousand fans. True. Fifteen thousand is enough. I, you, I'm right. Thanks, Brad. Talking, That's all you need to say. You're <laughs> talking logic, and I'm talking made MLS. up MLS rules. Yes. Um, but it'll be interesting to see who will fill that next MLS slot. So. But it's, it's interesting that, that I see that MLS is now looking for people, whereas yeah. three, five years ago, people were banging down their door. I mean, that was, Oh, I still think there's four or five people that are and, banging down the door. And that's what I, I'm not so sure now, man. But I, I mean, that's. I still think Phoenix, San Diego, Las Vegas. There are still plenty of people that want to get in think, on that U.S. soccer Indy, marketing. I arm. think Indy and Louisville are in the next tier down that if it made sense, they'd do it. I don't know that Indy would. I don't know. Because they'd have to build a stadium because they wouldn't competing with the Colts. We, I mean, seeing no, how I know. terribly I that was laid out. But yeah. all of these things involve getting a new big money owner mm-hmm. who would say, all right, 100 million. I mean, there are people in this world who go, 200 million? Okay. That's a good deal. I, yeah. I'll hold off on buying a new yacht. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, we've got a family like that here mm-hmm. who decided... Oh, you just need us to build a $250 million stadium? Mm-hmm. We can do that. Yeah. So. Now, all of this aside, I would love. <laughs> math raising his hand. His hand up. I would love nothing more to have Louisville go in with oh, us. Oh, the King's Cup revival. Oh, yeah. last level. my God. Yeah. Be great. I, go, going back to the Taylors and <laughs> just to people that can plump 200. If. If they were asked to do it in another city that wasn't St. Louis, they wouldn't do it. But that's what I'm I saying. Think, I think maybe they're very there's a St. Louis oriented. But maybe there's a Louisville family like that that but, I don't well, know. Well, Paul Edgerly was going to do it here, yeah. and he's in Boston. Yeah. You know, I, there's plenty of those kind of people yeah. that'll do it. The other thing. Maybe Paul the, Edgerly will do one Louisville. One reason to believe that. <laughs> if, I, if I'm Sacramento, I, I'm calling Jim Cavanaugh looking for his number. Yeah. <laughs> one reason to believe Louisville would do it. There's nothing that club loves more than a rebrand. <laughs> and That's they true. would have to get a new logo. So, I mean, just saying. Could they? Could they submit one of the old ones as a new one? Uh, let's do. Uh, let's do the beg for money segment of the podcast. Uh, Lino, Matt, will you tell the story about Jacob? So uh, a while ago, I'm going to start at the beginning. Sarah said that she got a, a message from some rando guy yep. on Instagram. <laughs> who wanted to talk to her about this and Sarah's like I don't want to talk to no rando guy I just spoke to on the internet yeah no he's like give me your number and I was like no (laughs) I've seen this movie (laughs) (laughs) so I said well I'll do it and and it was it was a fellow referee his name was Aaron who was telling me the story of uh, Jacob Post he's found out his daughter's just got leukemia now here's the story with Lino I one of the very first St. Louis Lions games very first times I hung out with you guys and the Luligans uh was a hot summer's day Back in 2012 in, in Cottleville, I was very drunk and there was this <laughs> dude and he was dressed immaculately. You know, his shirt was tucked in, his socks were up to his knees, his boots were polished, he had his flag and his watch and he, you know, his hair was perfect and he was fit as a fiddle and I'm drenched in fucking sweat and I stink of beer and I'm effing and jeffing and sweating my head off and I'm just giving him pelters, you know, about... Lino this, Lino that, you know, and raise your flag here and you don't, you'll never get a whistle if you can't use your flag and kind of stuff. And I was just kept calling him Lino and he, he just became known as Lino. And every time we seemed to go to a game, whether it was at the Lions or the Pius or, or Fire, Fire and, Ice. and Ice or he let, latterly FC Bordeaux, and he did get a lot of games and we saw him a lot of times at St. Louis FC. It was, Lino's on the game, you know? And... I wasn't at the game of the fire and ice, but you well, guys he also started laughing. Yeah, like, yeah. I was gonna. If you had a good one, he would never turn around, but you would see him kind of shake. You yeah. see the shoulders bouncing and him holding. And he appreciated a good. Look. It was never mean. No, 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 no. But it was. It was never malicious. Like it, it was, became where we were trying to make him laugh. Uh-huh. Like yeah. we were trying out our stand-up material <laughs> <laughs> on the audience that wasn't allowed to laugh. But there was there was a game, and I wasn't at the game. But I, you guys told me that. After a fire and ice game, 
you were at a bar, he showed up with the, the, the referee crew, yeah. and y'all had a beer together. You yeah, know, yeah. And, and we. He, I bought him several beers. Uh, I, I remember it very succinctly. That this was not a bribe. This yeah. was after the game that we kept saying <laughs> that we kept saying. You know, maybe this call goes our way next time. Yeah, and and I think he he admitted that if he wasn't involved in the officiating crew, he'd probably come out and join us and yeah. have a beer and be 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 a fan. Very and, nice, very nice man. You know, and this is a dude that you know I. I mean, he's, Mitch, a, he's Mitch, us. Mitch yeah. and Brad, it's, you guys, you've given 20, 25 years of, of service to St. Louis soccer. Well, you know what? So's he. Yeah. But, but another way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another way. And, and and honestly, he's probably more valuable because that is a <laughs> thankless job. Definitely. He is a th- oh, he's, he's definitely contributed more to the game than I am. Yeah. You, you know, and he's, he's a solid family guy. He lives out east and he's good friends with Sam Fink. And um, his daughter is five. just a good guy, and and he's just a family guy, and he's he's found out his little girl's got like leukemia, and it's and it's just you, as a parent, it's one of your worst nightmares. And I know we're all having problems. We've all got our own issues. I mean, God knows, Chris Chris just lost his dad, and Jake's lost his son, and and this and Jacob's going through this with his little girl, and it's just sometimes you feel it's too much, man. Yeah. It's too much, and and. And, and the other problem is, this is America, and even with good insurance, it's they're, gonna cripple they're them. looking it's gonna at cripple a them. huge amount of bills. It's going to cripple them. Because so. he's going to have to miss work to take care of her and, and all of that. And So they do have a GoFundMe set up. Just anything can help. Because, look, we're all pet. We all sit here, and we all laugh and joke, and, but we're all parents. And it could happen. Nope. <laughs> nope, sorry. Sarah's always the smart one. <laughs> So, yeah, yes, but true. you have a cat. But but, yeah. you, but you, you know what? You're a surrogate parent to, to Wesley and Stephen, and yeah. you look after and Will, Brad. And, and, Will. Like, <laughs> and Brad. Just because people don't have kids doesn't mean like we don't. You're care heartless. Also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like, no, I, of course I, I donated no. to it. But again, and just like we do with charity du jour, sometimes all you can give is a buck. Sometimes all you can give is five dollars. That adds up. Even and if, everything we've done as a group. Has been a dollar here, a five dollars there. So e- even if you can't give anything, keep him in your thoughts. Keep yeah. his little girl in your thoughts. I'll, I'll try and provide updates. But yeah. J- Jacob Post, as I say, he's given twenty years of his life to this this game that we love, and it's been thankless. As someone said, yeah. hey, it's, it's a thankless task being a referee, and you know it's just you know. And at the end of the day, I mean, he is one of us. Like yeah. even though he's not in the corner. If, if he wasn't a referee, he would be one of us. Yeah. Right. So, and right now, as it sits at, right now, it's at eighteen thousand, which is wow. really, which is really good. Yeah. But they did set the the goal as fifty thousand because that's probably what they're going to need. Yeah. 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 And and God, because it's a long road. Leukemia. I mean, our friend Will Oler. Yeah. Was battling it and is still battling it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it never ends. And I'm sitting here looking, and this poor girl, she is the cutest she's little sweet. thing. She is, yeah. And, and to and know what she's going through, it breaks my heart. And every time I see it, I start to tear up. There for the grace of God goes on. But I mean, as I say, you know, it's just too much. Because Chris, Chris Amda lost his dad to, to COVID. You know, he almost made it. He was a month away from getting a vaccine. You know, Jake Trokey, man, positive vibes, dude. I'm with you. You know, it's just too much right now. And, and I, I could not be more proud, though. I scrolled down this donation list. A bunch names, of names. A lot of names, know. you know. There yeah. are Luligans galore. There are players. Guy Ben, Sam Fink. You know, there are just so many of our community stepping up and doing this. And, and there's a lot of, you know what, as well, there's a lot of big amounts where they've remained anonymous. Yeah. And I think yes. I know who they are, too. I know who one of them is. We'll yeah. put it that way. Mm-hmm. And it is fantastic. And, and... You know, I, I see this and I, I'm still scrolling down and, you know, there's there's ex-players that have gone on to other places that still remember him and do it. You know, I mean, there's people involved with uh, St. Louis City that are doing this because this is our community. Mm-hmm. And, you know, God forbid one of us would have to be in that position. I was interviewed by the, a local East Side paper about this. And I, I said, you know, when you, when you grow up, in, in this sport in America, and one thing I never realized is that you guys have all grown up being called grass fairies. Why don't you support a real t- sport? Or Field what, fairies, know? yeah. Yeah, grass fairies, you know, and you, you get very defensive about that. 
and you 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 look if the, you see another soccer fan, even if you are walking through the aisles of of Lowe's and you see a guy in a Spurs shirt, you instantly recognize it. And you have that little look of. of, of I did it tonight at Qdoba. Yeah. You know, a guy and, walked in with a uh, Borussia Dortmund jersey, and I just said, "Nice shirt." You know, <laughs> yeah. you do, you do, and and they were very defensive like that. Yeah. And I think that that whole growing up of of following this very niche fringe sport as it was back then let lead that you were insulted for yeah. lead you to be very defensive and protective around people that are, that have grown up in that environment and you know we do help our own yeah speaking of you you mentioned chris chris lost his dad and jake lost his son just Another couple of shouts for it's our friends who yes, are going through just the worst thing you can go through. It's the worst. And, and I know Jake listens because he'll message me yeah. every time after about what Bird did to make him laugh. And he'll <laughs> he'll pick up on whatever song I put up. He's always one of the first to comment on the song. And, just, and, and I've been talking to him recently. You know, it's a lot of distraction from what's going on. And just keep people like that in your thoughts. I'm, I'm not a religious person. If you are, please pray for these people because it's a horrible horrible time but and jake did want to say thank you to everybody who donated to his yes mm. go fund me thanks to, to darian for organizing that yeah. that was that was just a big... to pay for the funeral costs and and take that burden right off mm. their minds but mm-hmm. but this is the community we're talking about you know three people that are important to all of us even yeah. even if you don't like one of them personally yeah, they're still one of us. They're still one of us. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, if, if it was somebody I didn't like, but they're still one of us, I'm still going to put money to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, because it's like, yeah. okay, I may hate you, but here's some money because you're going through a bad thing. And like Matt said, it's our community. Yeah. Um, can we get on something happy yes, now, please? Uh, our jerseys. They're coming in. The oh. black jerseys. I got mine. It yep. is gorgeous. I I'm, I'm loving all the pictures, seeing what numbers people chose and, yep. and seeing what custom names they put on them mm-hmm. so please keep sharing pictures of those i, I like to see them i, like I haven't seen a 31 them. or a 7 though i have not seen those mm-hmm. yet good thing uh a <laughs> couple of uh somebody did bring up something that i think it was jesse daniels that said um like he didn't care if anybody else got his number because he would just assume they were fans of his <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i was like you know what you're right it's no. the brad to member in hero jersey <laughs> now if somebody got seven maurice on it yeah i'm all with for your it. name that would be even better. i'm all for it you won't get your own name but somebody it's else just, could get your name I, i'm gonna get a sarah jersey <laughs> just just make her say take it off <laughs> 31 yeah. and just have it be sarah sarah like Bur- <laughs> sarah burns her jersey <laughs> it's not robertson yeah. it's just yeah. sarah yeah. it's like paley no i'd be like uh will miss sarah <laughs> miss sarah yes miss sarah uh, a couple of player updates <laughs> khaleesi uh, i want to see Brad khaleesi. Wearing a khaleesi. <laughs> uh insta princess <laughs> It's like, Matt, how many uh, custom names can I put on the back of that jersey? (laughs) Instead of a number. (laughs) Yeah, just line them up. Um, I want to mention Tyler Blackwood, our good friend, has signed with the Oakland Roots. He'll be joining Wall Fall there. Good for him. So, therefore, that's a team I will definitely keep an eye on. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be a good team just on those two. And another one of my favorite players, Kadeem, signed with Memphis 901. I I hope they suck, but I hope Kadeem has a good year. (laughs) Yep. And he's Uh, close. We could go see him. Yeah, we could go see him. It was funny because the other night Aaron was talking about us maybe taking taking the kids down there. Go see the uh, MLK Museum. Yeah. Oh yeah, go. Uh, Memphis is a good time. It yeah. is. I, oh, I, imme- took, I took you into the immediately. MLK. I was like, well, we have to take them to Graceland. And yep. Jack's like, you're going to make me watch Mondo Elvis before, aren't yep. you? I said, yep. you goddamn right, son. Yep. But but I was you shameless know, plug. If you haven't seen Mondo Elvis, search it out. It's nope. on YouTube. And, it, and if you go to Graceland, try to go upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Just try it. Just try. There was no guard there the last time I was there. You'd be in the front row with the angles, <laughs> but. But I was still born. It, <laughs> <laughs> but immediately, you know, we were like, well, Jack was like, I, you know, it'd be cool to see an NBA game. We could go see Memphis Grizzlies. So I was like, yeah, it'd be fun. And then I'm like, oh, Memphis 901 has one of our players. Yeah. Yeah. I could go to that. Tim Howard, too. Yeah. And you should, fuck you should, Tim Howard. He doesn't know how to say hi to people. You should swing through Nashville and pick up some hot chicken before the no, game. No, no. Don't Memphis like have seven players still on their roster? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. It's, it's not. They're not great. Is it? No, 
They're going to make Kadeem do everything? <laughs> hey, you know what? If there is a player that can do it. guaranteed playing time. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's always said the biggest problem with Kadeem is they didn't get him enough regular minutes. Yep. He's he'll, gonna have, he'll get it there. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're asking you to play two positions, <laughs> Kadeem. <laughs> <laughs> if you could cover the left and the right wing, that'd be His great. His jersey if, just have slash with two numbers yeah. on the back, or or one's a long sleeve and one short sleeve, one I've, side so he could be goalie I've and got, striker. I've got two yellow cards on one of my numbers. The other <laughs> one's fine. The other one's clear. Yeah. Um. So yeah, both of those guys, and and then I, I did want to mention, um, Matteo Buasso. If you don't know Matteo, yeah, he signed with Slu. Sure did, and. Way back in 2015, Noel came to us and said her son was on a really competitive 3v3 team. Yep. They wanted to buy Luligan jerseys and they wanted to be the official 3v3 <laughs> St. Luligan's team. I mean, and at that time, Noel was. They're just probably our, like, what, 12 at the oh, time? Oh, yeah, they were young. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and Noel was a friend and we were like, ah, sure, what the hell? You know, we didn't know how good these kids were. Yeah. These kids won national championships. They would travel to tournaments. If you had a title, they were taking it. Yes. Yep. They, when they would show up at a tournament, they were winning their age they've, division. They've gone off on, those kids have gone off on trial, like to Feyenoord and yeah. Dortmund, yeah. Some really and Dusseldorf big, and stuff. Really big clubs. This, this is a very talented group. Well, Mateo was one of the original 3v3 players, and he has signed with SLU. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's very cool. You can still see him locally. And the fact that if he if he, he scores be, a goal and takes off his slew jersey and has a Luligan jersey on, <laughs> that'd be awesome. I'm, here I'm sure he would get fined or whatever uh, they whatever. do to I'll college pay, kids. Uh, oh no, I we can't can pay it. No, we can't. Yeah, that NCAA would, that's, rules. That's a. Oh. We might have to just like abs- send him a birthday card. Yeah, we, we could. could quote we could buy him beer. Pay, oh wait a minute, yeah. he's still uh, 18. No, we'll just send him a birthday card. Okay. Um, but anyway, and there's a very big chance he might be a part of this. USL Division Two team. I don't know that for sure, mm-hmm. but they do get college kids, and it would be cool if, like, Patrick Schulte and some of these kids who used mm-hmm. to be a part of St. Louis FC yeah. Academy that that would would please would play me great. Yeah, I would mm-hmm. love to see some of these kids a little bit more. So, anyway, congratulations, Mateo. Uh, you know, I, like I said, we knew you when, <laughs> and don't don't forget us. You loaded our beer on the bus. <laughs> he did that's load right. our beer on the bus. That's right. It, it, and that's, that's the and other And those th- kids came on road trips and they, yep. not only were they representing us in fields across the world, they stood in the corner and they had fun with us. Yep. 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 So, good job. Um, I don't want to talk about the Glenn Karma thing. We've talked enough about race today. Uh, just quit being don't, dickheads. Yeah, just don't be stupid. I guess the uh, last topic and then we can get to some questions is Stadium updates. There have been some new stadium update. There have been some new renderings. Uh, kind of neat how they're, you know, building out the practice fields across the street and mm-hmm. the headquarters. It is kind of unique in MLS to having the entire team be located downtown. Yeah. Um, so that'll be cool. I'm I'm glad to see it happen. Um uh, I don't know. More, don't have, more exciting steel and concrete talk <laughs> next time. We do have a loading dock. <laughs> that I, was, I that, do like that headquarter building. Yeah, that's, that's a yeah, cool that, old yeah, brick yeah, building. Yeah, I do too. I want to get in there. I want to look at it. Should you get see if your company will put an office there for you? <sighs> see if see if we can paint a tifo there. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, let's look at. Uh, we need to move our St. Louis office over there. <laughs> okay, here here we go with questions. Um, what a pint wants to talk about. Anything to take his mind off the depression of having no games to go to. We will have some games to go to. Um, but you watch Ted Lasso if you haven't already. Yeah. I just watched that. And he also wants to know how Bird's training for the Tour de France is going. I gotta do something. To <laughs> sign off. You put you some had a big old bike ride. I, si- I signed up for the 65 miler up in Quincy oh, in July. Go. I've got nice. I've got to get in shape for it. You rode a lot yesterday. Uh, but or the it other wasn't day. it wasn't the mileage that kicked my ass yesterday. It was 2,000 feet elevation. Yeah, that sucked. Mm. I can't do that. Fat fat boy can't go up. <laughs> fat boy, he weighs half no, of me. No, and you, no, no. You know, no. I'm fat boy can't go up hills. <laughs> <laughs> uh, snared Luligan Zach wants to know. How do we feel about the recent U.S. Men's National Team U23 games? You know, I got to say. They win the games that they're supposed to win. Yeah, he want, but he's wanting to know why, if it is it our time, we need to have a big tournament win for that 
young group. When when the what? When the qualifying rounds? Or the, the, is he talking like Olympic gold? I, I don't know. <laughs> he, he's a, he wants a convincing win. You think uh, they can only be who they put in front of them. Yeah. I, but that's, that's, all, that's, that's always been the problem with the United States they, as a whole. They play Belize. They play, you know. Costa they, Rica. They, well, Costa Rica are decent, but Dominican but, Republic, Haiti. Right. Yeah. You know, garbage. Uh, trash. The grenadine. Oh, but you know what? People people are like excited because they beat Dominican Republic 4 0. So fuck it. Dominican Republic. I mean, I can't, you know, it's, I can't get excited about that. If they make it to the Olympics and they beat France, then fucking A. Don't, Game on then. Don't count out small countries. <laughs> like Croatia. <laughs> Croatia's fucking massive. Um, we just took all the beaches. <laughs> yes, yes, you did. <laughs> Coastline hogs. You're, yeah. the, you're the Chile of Europe. <laughs> uh, this one's from Lou Boys SC podcast. If you haven't been listening, they've been doing some. No, they've been doing some good podcasts with uh, former players. Yeah. And doing interviews. So check that out. But they want to know the most memorable slash weird St. Louis FC player story. I think we can tell this one if we don't say who it was. Oh, boy. The Airbnb story. Oh. oh. I could just preface it by saying, fuck you, fuck boy. <laughs> we won't say who it is. That, nope. that does pretty much tell us. <laughs> but fuck you, fuck boy. Yep. Um, he left at some point during the season, uh, but there was still time on the... No, it was at the end of the season. What well, he apparently been going on all year. What? Yes. Yeah, it had. Yeah. What? When the team... The team has a certain number of... Apartments. Condo, apartments, whatever you want to call them, where the single players stay. Mm-hmm. Like the married guys usually get a place with their family, and you can choose not to stay in the player apartments, but a lot of guys do. And they're just like two bedroom apartments, and they sh- they'll share them <clears throat> or whatever. One St. Louis FC player had Airbnb'd his out. <laughs> Well, normally you have a roommate. Right. Like, he didn't have a roommate for whatever reason. Well, must have been. He must. The guy must have been cut. Or honestly. something, yeah. He, he, he didn't have, Oh, the, you know, there's. Or injured or whatever. There's six apartments, right. but there's only 11 guys right. that need them, kind right. of thing. So he Airbnb, Airbnb the other room. For, for a way trip. For, for oh. a long time, yeah. And then apparently, it, like, they had the apartment, like, it was a year lease. And then he was leaving whenever the season was over. So there were still like a couple months left where St. Louis FC owned the apartment, but nobody was going to be living there. So he Airbnb it out until the lease was up. Um, I, I, that, I believe I mean, they found out because he forgot, went, he forgot to take it off Airbnb. Something, yeah. And somebody tried to show up. Yeah. When With the team were moving the furniture yeah, out. Like, yeah, they were painting it or whatever. Yeah. 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 And some people came in that were on vacation. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah. this is our place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? <laughs> Which I have two reactions to that story. A, what a douche. And B, that is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, even though I don't like the guy as a human. It is creative as it fuck. It is a funny, funny story. So. Now, yeah. I'll preface this by also saying a, a previous club of his. Yeah. I know his, who his roommate was. Yeah. And the stories his roommate has told me makes me understand why he lived alone in St. <laughs> Louis. Maybe no, ch- nobody chose to live Correct. with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Could be. Um, and then the other part of Lou Boy's question is, uh, you can only choose one USL or MLS team to follow this season. Which, which team are you choosing? None of the above. I can okay. only follow what now? One USL team or MLS team. Which are are you going to cheer for? Are you going to watch their games? I take it back. I, I know who I'm going to root for. Whoever's playing Louisville. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say Cincinnati. So I'm going to lose. <laughs> I'm going to probably watch Austin's games just because they're a new team and I want to see what being new in the league is like and for the same reason Miami's games. And I think the USL team I'm excited to follow is now Oakland now that they I, have Tyler yeah. and yep. Wall Fall. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'll probably watch a lot of Oakland games. Pittsburgh and Oakland for me. I, yeah, I'm Dequa. Gonna, I'm going to keep an eye on what happens in yeah. Charlotte. Yeah. Just, just I want to see. See, that's what, the thing. What, I'm going to tune happens. into a lot of games that yeah. I normally wouldn't watch just to see how how it goes. Yeah, but, and I probably will at least 
go to one Louisville game this year, and I might pick that based on who they're playing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, but again, I'm not. I'm not going to. Oakland or Pittsburgh got, they've got yeah. a bunch of our yeah. players. But again, I, I still I will I will watch Phoenix Rising because of Joey and uh, and, and because and, I have wait. ESPN Plus. I have another statement I have to make. Okay. I'm going to root for anybody that's not in this new central division that we were promised for five years that never happened. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. I was so angry when I saw that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Will Bramlett, what do you th- what do you think the... Uh, which of the three new MLS stadiums to open this season is the best? I have to see them in action, but I think, you know, we kind of talked about that. I like that they're different. I like that... That you'll have a different feel going into different stadiums. Um, Cincinnati's architecture style isn't my cup of tea. I think Columbus kind of looks like our stadium. It's kind of squared with the rooftops. I don't know much about Austin's. I'm, I'm interested to see Austin's, but I hope they made it's it a weird. pre-court team. So I hope they made it weird. I keeping they, with yeah, keep Austin weird. Keeping Austin weird. Don't give a shit. But it's funny because here, <laughs> here we are talking about construction again. This yeah, is like the exactly. third time. We don't care. It's but, all about what happens on the pitch, guys. But you know what's yeah, important I mean, during construction? But which of those stadiums lends? Bradley! You know what's important during construction? <laughs> right. Making sure you have an electrician. Oh. Yeah. You know what, though? I am going to call. You're electric. Mark Gardner, you're electric. 314-814-3897. I take my stimulus money. My mm-hmm. wife's been wanting new lights in our kitchen because we've got an old fluorescent light situation in there from when they built the house. I bought some new LED lighting. And rather than kill myself trying to put it up, because I could Damn do it. it. You already tried, didn't you? Not yet. Okay. Uh, I could do it. Uh huh. But Mark Gardner will be able to do it in roughly... A fourth of the time it would take me, yeah, maybe more. Probably I'm, not as many trips. To not this. as many Those trips are, to yeah. the lows. Yeah, um, probably not as many electrocutions. Not yeah. as many god damn it's and throwing things across <laughs> yeah. the room. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take the day off of work. I'm going to say, Mark, come down and put these lights in. I'll have a beer. I'll shoot the shit with Mark. Mm-hmm. Um, and and my wife will be happy that it's done professionally mm-hmm. and it looks good. 